Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over uh, Code Force round 675, uh, problem D, returning home. Uh, I'm going over this problem because I, I don't know, I just, I actually did like this. Uh, I stopped it almost during the contest, but I had some rustiness to have to, to uh, go off. But the idea is actually just constructing a, a graph, right? I think from here, uh, we can, you know, the prerequisite for me, um, and I'm not going to go over it that deeply, is that this is the shortest path problem from the complete graph, right? So that means that, you know, let's say you are given some node, uh, you know, that's the starting node, that's the end node, um, and you have, you know, nodes in between that you could teleport to, right? Um, I mean, I think it's fairly uh, straightforward to see, uh, and if not, then maybe it's something that, you know, uh, practice on the shortest path intuitions. But basically, you know, if you have to complete graph uh, and you do a, want a shortest path algorithm, and that includes, you know, it's planar, so there's, everything is connected to everything, um, and so forth, right? I'm not going to, okay, I mean, this is as much, I'm, you know, you could put, pretend there's a, uh, a shortest path, and then, you know, from that, you could construct the shortest path spanning tree uh, of some sorts, right? And... And then that will give you, I don't know if this is actually true, but uh, the shortest path from the beginning to the end, right? Um, so that's, so I think we all understand that part. Uh, or, you know, if you don't get studying a little bit, uh, let's say we do, now this is the shortest path. And then the the problem is M is equal to 10 to the fifth, right? Um, as we kind of see in the problem, I'm highlighting a little bit. I don't know if it matters, but right. So, but then the complete graph on this is going to be M, um uh uh m square right and m square is way too much 10 to the fifth square is n to the 10 right and also so one thing to note is that i drew this thing really weird uh the actual cost is actually to get from you know to get from say uh this left node changing colors so that, to get from here to here It's actually the two two possible ways you can go, right? One is going here to here ish, or one to go here to here, right? Um, so the cost from from uh, a black node to uh, or any node to another node, we'll, we'll go over some base cases later. But from node uh, the starting node to any other node is just the minimum of the delta x or delta y, right? So, okay, so then, and now, once you see, and, okay, so that's from the starting node, right? And you, uh, similarly, to get from any, any two nodes, let's say, uh, let's change the colors a little bit. Hmm. Let's say from this purple node to this other purple node, uh, again, instead of just doing the straight or linear distance, it's actually uh, the min of the, delta x or the delta y right i mean th this is uh spelled this is kind of kind of kind of kind of in in the problem in that you know what because once you go x uh you know once you go left or right then you could teleport right to to the spot and and i think it from greedy kind of way uh you can tell that you can get from one node to another just by directly um taking the min component right okay so then th the question is well uh it turns out that uh b because of, of the, this property we only have to consider adjacent nodes uh in both the x and the y direction right because now if you look at all the you know let's say we flatten it um so that you know we have uh a node here a node here, a node here, a node here, I think I missed a spot, hang on, a node here, and a node here, right? Well, what we're saying is that, okay, let's draw an edge from here to here, because this is, um, because whatever, uh, you know, uh, let me change the color a second. Oh, the yellow is terrible. <laughs> so let's say we have this node to this other node, right? Um, well, the purple is going to be just the, the x, 
it's either going to be a combination of um, X or Y, but but so from this purple node to this other purple node, it's going to be the combination of the X components of the cyan uh, uh, distance, or you know you don't you you don't, and if that's the case, then you know this is easier to prove that um, you only need the adjacent ones. But if it's not, then also that's another way of showing that. Um, that's all you need because now um, effectively you're creating a bounding box be behind a node, right? So in in this case, in the uh, the the first the left purple node, drawing is hard. I need to get an iPad or something. My fault, folks. Uh, yeah, you know, for for this one, we're gonna create a bound oops a bounding box of the two adjacent left axes. So we're gonna create a bounding box by looking at the adjacent uh, the adjacent y values and then the adjacent x values, right? So by then we create this bounding box, uh, and you can show that. Uh, and, and you know I don't have a, another low note to the left bottom or something like that, but um, but at most because on on the x coordinate there's at most going to be, ooh. yeah, at most they're going to be two neighbors. And then on the Y component, actually it's not, this is a, I drew it incorrectly. Actually it should be uh, looking at X. So it's the intersection between the X's and then the intersection between the nearest Y's. So it's the intersection between these two boxes, right? Um, because it's going to, you all you want for a given node is to look at the two adjacent uh, nodes and then also the two adjacent y nodes right um and and the cost for these we you know we all figured out is the min of uh x and or delta x or min of delta y but and you can kind of prove to yourself that these are kind of the components that you can build off because there's no other nodes that can be possibly inside right uh, so from that, you you can kind of figure out, um, you know, from these corners of the rectangles, you could figure out one at a time, uh, b build out from components, the shortest path from the beginning to the end. Uh, and now we're going to go over the code on how to, how I did it with C++. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go over the code. So we, we asked why... Um, so I didn't see plus plus. The, the code is actually not that clean, but um, but we're just gonna go over the ideas of it. And uh, and one thing that I didn't mention is that uh, now in the new constructor graph, you look at the two adjacent or the closest to, um, you know, you look at the one that's closest to the left and the one that's closest to the right and the node that's closest to the top and the one that's closest to the bottom. Well, then each node will have only at most four edges, right? And from that. Uh, your your graph is now a lot easier because it only has four edges to relax, and then your um, and even though it's ten to the fifth, it's just ten to the fifth times four number of edges, right? Roughly speaking, so that should be much easier if you use um, a log e algorithm, right? Uh, a re log e algorithm, and for me, I use dice shorts for that reason. Um, but yeah, my code is a little bit messy. Uh, I also submitted a little bit late. A little bit rough contest, but uh, just a little bit rusty today. But yeah, but basically, uh, yeah, I set up the. This is me building the graph here, um, and basically, the cost of the graph. I just create a node from the beginning to the end. If you want to go directly, uh, so this is the cost, and then from the this is the cost from each of the from the starting node to each of the nodes and this is the cost from each of the nodes to the end cost right so there's a little bit difference here uh the difference is that you can't teleport to the end spot so that's why this cost function is a little bit different than the other cost function um i think that's the only thing that um and the other thing that i made a mistake during the contest was that i forgot that c plus plus is max heap it's been a little while and yeah and then basically all i did is i saw it and look at adjacent elements uh, to push the, you know, this is the cost of the two adjacent ones, and and basically I sort first by x, that's what this looks like, and then I push back uh, the cost of the adjacent edges. 
Uh, I I also sort by Y, which is what this thing looks like. Um, it's a it's a little bit messy. It's not th that tight the code because I'm a little bit rusty or a lot rusty for C plus plus. Um, but yeah, this is the cost again. This is the same cost as before. It's just that now we look at this is essentially copy and paste to be honest. Except for now we look at the what the Y component. So newest up down, and then this is just standard Dijkstra algorithm. Um, which is that uh, for C++, I set the distance to infinity. Uh, I set the starting node to have a distance of zero. And then, you know, I keep popping. And then for each edge coming out of here, which other than the starting and ending, uh, there should only, at most be four edges uh, or five edges if you count the starting and the edge or something like that, right? Um, but like, you know, uh, a number of edges. And then from that, I just, you know, this is straight dice drew, and then I get the distance to distance one. Uh, pretty straightforward. I literally solved it a minute after, uh, maybe like two, three minutes after contest, so it was a little bit sad. Uh, a little bit rusty. This is my first C++ code in like three months. I'm definitely too rusty. But yeah, let me know what you think about uh, code force, code explanation. I don't do many of these. I usually do these for the problems that I really dig um, from time to time. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, leave in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more uh, because I don't, again, do that many code forces. Anyway, I will see y'all later. Bye-bye.